We are live. Good evening, Doc. How are you today? I am well, thank you. Good evening to you. How are you doing? Good to see you. Ah, oh, could be better. I have a headache from hell, but that will not stop me from doing what I enjoy to do. <laughs> I, I, I just, I just, I just love the tenacity. You know, you're ever pushing, and in just how you push, you challenge us to also do better. So thank you for showing up. <laughs> wow, any time, any time. How was the day? While we wait for one or two people to join. It has been it has been a busy day, but uh, I mean it's a Monday. Mondays are known to be quite stressing at some at some times, but I'm always reminded of my favorite statement. So I love to say, "Stop agonizing, start organizing." Okay, so that is yeah. So at some point during the day, I found myself literally been a victim of agonizing <laughs> and i was like come on <laughs> stop agonizing yeah. and you know, start organizing yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's the thinking behind mindful mondays because you know monday is high potential stress day and i think it's Absolutely. just good to come back yeah and touch yeah. base and, and see what's going on mentally emotionally and see if we can True. unpack True. some helpful tidbits for people and to help That's them very on true. their journey. Yeah. That's good. So, yeah, we'll get right into it. Uh, we, started, we started 30 minutes on our usual timing, but that's fine. Okay. So we'll get right into it. And today we're looking at difficult emotions. Yes. And we, be, we began last week looking at emotions in general. We, we talked about positive emotions. We talked about negative emotions. We, we talked about how emotions are there to serve a purpose to show us what's going on on the inside on the inside really yeah yeah. Uh, yeah i thoroughly enjoyed last week's session and today our focus is on negative emotions which we say that you know there is no such thing really as a negative as, emotion as a negative emotion itself. yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, these emotions come to to serve as a compass of what's going on in the inside, and it's how we how we respond and how we express those. So we have sure. a few emotions that we're going to we're going to target specifically tonight, and I'm excited to uh -huh. get into them because I think I have experienced some of these personally, and I'm excited to talk about okay. what they are exactly when we think about a definition and. Um, yeah. What? How do we manage them? So we'll jump right into it, and we will get into the emotion of of anger. What is anger, and how okay. how is it distinguished from from other emotions? All right. So as we are getting into that, I was just trying to share uh, this very live on my page. I just realized yes. I haven't. <laughs> you didn't do that. Yeah. Yes, you do that. Yeah, just Maybe doing that minutes. in a second. Mm -hmm. Let me also see what's All right. going on here. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that's a good place to start from because um, especially emotions such as anger, we have yeah. a number of things attached to to anger. Things to do with mm -hmm. aggression, you know. There are times that most people are angry and the thing that is associated to anger is really um, much to do with just being physical, you know, being annoyed, being aggressive. And we look at it from the negative perspective because it is usually expressed in a negative way. So... Mm. Anger is one of those emotions that we would literally describe as a transformative emotion. Transformative emotion in the sense that it aids us or helps us to get transformed. There's a Nigerian motivational speaker. He was called Kin something. I've really forgotten. And yeah. he would literally say that if you are not angry, <laughs> with how you 
with how your life is, you will not have the courage mm. to change it. And so mm -hmm. he would he would say that it is with anger that you get to say enough is enough, right? So he was bringing it from that perspective that if you are not really angry about your situation, you are likely to remain the same. It is only those people that get to feel this anger and say, okay, I think I'm done with this kind of, you know, economic crisis. I think I'm done with this, you know, a kind of life that I'm living. And that basically points to the fact that anger has got a particular purpose. And mm -hmm. the purpose in itself is what I'm trying to bring out is that it gives us this opportunity to transform, to evolve, to change. Mm -hmm. And as much as it is associated with, with, with aggression, and because it is associated with aggression, most times people try to resist, uh, you know, even in the Bible, I think one thing that we are told is do not let the sun go down with, uh, with your mm -hmm. anger. It does not in any way say do not you know, be annoyed or do not get angry. It doesn't necessarily say that. It gives us a picture that you are allowed to be angry, but be mindful it should not consume you, right? Yeah. Be mindful it should not consume you. So I think I would say it's important to be angry, one, <laughs> because it is the only way we are going to know some of the things that we value. Because I would only I would only get angry if somebody gets within my boundaries or somebody gets to maybe affect my core values or my highest values. Anything that mm -hmm. I value more, when I get angry, it is a message. It is showing me that, oh, in this aspect, there has been something that has happened. The only way that our parents growing up would be angry with us is when we do something that is beyond their moral values maybe at home or the things that they have put in place for you mm -hmm. to follow. And so when you don't get to do some of those things, they would be angry. So anger in itself, it is a trans transformative emotion. It gives us that signal. It allows us to see the important things because you can only be angry about something that is important, right? You cannot be angry about a number of things that are just trivial. You will be angry if it is something that is important and that in itself helps us to see or to realize that uh, anger makes us know that, all right, here there's need for something that needs to be done. There's an action perhaps that you need to do there's a change that you need to make. And I think that's uh, what I would say in that sense. I love that you brought up two very important aspects uh, with the anger about one, if I'm upset, it's because it's something that has violated something I care about, right? Yeah. So maybe when mm -hmm. we talk about personal value, someone would get angry mm -hmm. if they felt like there was a betrayal of loyalty in a friendship, yeah. right? Yeah, so, yeah. That that goes to show that I cared about this situation, and that's why I'm angry, exactly. and it's okay, yeah. and it's a normal mm -hmm. human human reaction. Or a yeah. boundary has been crossed, and I like that Absolutely. that motivational speaker King something that you have talked about, who says if you're not angry about your situation, it's very mm -hmm. unlikely. And Tony Robbins instead of anger uses hunger like if you are and you know how um, um, anger and hunger can be very hunger, yeah, yeah. A short <laughs> yeah, so until you feel deeply yeah so i like how you say it's transformative because the point is until mm -hmm. you feel deeply about something usually yeah. the likeliness of you to change that is lower but when you feel it's that lower, deeply about something it's, yeah it's not mm -hmm. about aggression but it's a strong yeah. indication that something needs to change or something has shifted in a way that makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. So I really That's like true. that. So That's how do true. we manage this anger? And shout out to Princess Barbie. We see you. Thank you for joining the broadcast. We're just talking Thank about managing difficult emotions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So over to you again, Doc. How then do we manage uh, an emotion like anger now that we know that it's a transformative mm -hmm. 
uh, emotion it's an indicator for for possible positive change how does one yeah. manage that emotion okay so i think it's it's important that we we get to what firstly the bible says the bible makes us know that we should not allow anger to consume us right mm -hmm. meaning that it is possible for anger to consume us and a lot that have been consumed by anger have acted on that anger we know a number of uh, you know horrible things that perhaps they have done and regretful things that they end up doing because mm -hmm. anger is a state of you getting to feel as though somebody has wronged you and yeah. in itself it's a valid emotion right it's a valid emotion we don't just get to feel it for no reason it's a valid emotion so it's 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 important that we begin to realize that if we are going to grow uh mature in our emotions if we're going to be emotionally mature it's important that self-awareness needs to come in and mm -hmm. self-awareness is basically us getting to know that i feel this yes i have been wronged mm -hmm. but let me try to label let me try to identify what is it that mm -hmm. is like what is the reason behind is it because somebody has betrayed me is this why i'm angry if if if, if we get to understand the reason and where this anger is coming from it will help us in managing because one we will know why it has come because oftentimes people just act on it without knowing why i usually say that you cannot take back you know the the words that you say or the actions that you say in a moment of you know anger because there are times that you would wish you didn't say things but you've already said it and yeah and just as um I think we usually say that it's easy for us to remember, you know, uh, what a person made us feel than necessarily what, you know, they did. So, yes, people are good at deeds, but most times people remember how you made them feel. Because even in how you may be charitable, generous, at times you may give an off vibe. And so, yes, they've received, but then you haven't made them feel valuable, you know. Maybe you are simply doing it to show off. So the same way, whatever that we do in that place of that difficult emotion, what we get to say, how we make people feel, is what will be a lasting impression upon them. So we need to be mindful of just the impact of our actions that would come from anger. So if we get to identify the reason and where this is coming from, we also get to be aware of the impact of, an, of, of the response that we would give. It would help us to be mindful of how we will respond or react in that state. And when we know that, we will then be able to at least know what we should do. Should we distract ourselves? Because at times you can actually distract yourself if you feel as though you, you can't contain yourself in the midst of the people that perhaps have made you angry. So at, at times you either distract yourself, leave the room, you know, get to at least take a walk. <laughs> there are people that have anger issues. I think at some point growing up, I had, because I was a stutterer, you know, I, I would basically have issues with just getting to talk. And because of that, I would have these anger issues. And I, I realized that I was coping through just keeping quiet. And mm. me keeping quiet didn't mean I didn't have what to say. I had a lot to say, but I couldn't say because I was a stutterer. You know, I would, mm -hmm. if I had to say, I would snap, you know. So yeah. I I had to keep quiet and just uh, try to be patient with people, though that wasn't easy. Anyway, story for another day. So um, <laughs> what we need to know is that we need to distract ourselves or find something that we can do that can keep us away from 
exploding because the number of people explode. This is why I was saying that anger is usually known for aggression and all these things. Yeah. So I think that is basically what I would say at, at the moment. But the other thing I would just say is that we should be mindful of our anger triggers. Most people mm. have anger triggers. And, you know, mm. there are some people, it could be in your social circle or even at home, you know that there are mm. some things you never say <laughs> because yeah. they are likely to respond in a particular way. It could be at work. You understand that mm, there are some areas you don't touch. There are some things you don't joke about because these people... Um, this person may be triggered and they would end up, you know, uh, uh, exploding or giving a particular attitude that, you know, would not be great for everyone. So it's also important that we get to know some of those triggers personally because it will help us to just uh, be mindful in those times when we need to um, avoid the different reactions that we're likely to have. Lovely. I like that. Doc, I, I, in just listening to you, where do we draw the line, therefore, between suppressing mm -hmm. the anger? Because last week yeah. we had gotten into so a lot of males struggle with emotional maturity because of suppressing. And I think anger yeah. is one of the emotions where not just men, but women as well, were very susceptible to suppressing that emotion. Like you have talked about, you're in a situation and because you don't want to explode, you, you take a walk to distract yourself. But what happens when you have cooled down? Do you just decide? And I think a lot of people uh, struggle with this because now when they've cooled down, they've lost that courage that comes with the anger to actually address the problem. So where do we draw the line between suppressing that anger and actually addressing it so that it does not begin to fester? No, I'm not sure if it's me or a dog who is muted. Uh, it's dog. Okay, so we we just lost Dr. Kadochi there briefly. I'm sure he will be back. Uh, today we're looking at managing difficult emotions. Last week we began talking about emotions in general. We talked about you know positive emotions, negative emotions. We talked about how. Um, negative emotions specifically because what we're talking about tonight are not in and of themselves feelings that are negative but emotions always serve as um, a compass for what's going on on the inside and they're not there to consume or to to do us harm but the idea is if they're managed right they can do what's they were intended to do. And so tonight we, we got a few a few emotions from, from our reading, which Doc is a part of, and we've been reading The Mountain Is You. And there's a number of emotions that are, are, are quote unquote difficult emotions, like which one of which we have already looked at just this evening, which is anger. And Doc was just explaining to us that anger can be a very transformative emotion because it points to us the fact that there's something that we care about that has been affected negatively or a boundary has been crossed. And we went on to talk about how um, sometimes this can be a loyalty that is, that is betrayed or like we have talked about a boundary that has been crossed. So... A way to manage that is to not let, he referred us to the Bible and he said we should not let um, the emotion of anger consume us, but rather it is something that is in our control uh, to manage. And we were just, before Doc uh, got cut off from the live, he was explaining how, I was asking the question about how do we, draw the line between suppressing an emotion because I notice that with anger, we explode because there's a certain um, courage that comes with it. When you're feeling angry because there's such a heavy emotion, we tend to explode in speaking. But if you do take a break, like Doc, Doc talks about, take a walk, get a distraction away from that emotion until you have calmed down. So I was asking Doc, where do we draw the line between 
um, suppressing the emotion and um, managing it. Hi, Doc. Welcome back. Thank you, sir, about that. No worries. Take issues. Okay. Take Did issues. Did you get my last issues. question? Uh, I I got the first part of it, but not uh, not entirely. But I have an idea of where you are driving to. But you can still ask. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I had just asked, saying, where do we draw the line between suppressing emotion and actually addressing the trigger that has that has brought the anger? So if someone has offended me and crossed the boundary, just as an example, and yeah. I decide to distract by taking a walk. Now, because the courage that comes with that explosive emotion of anger has died down, some people tend yeah. to suppress that emotion. So the question yeah. is, where do we draw the balance between not suppressing emotion and dealing with that boundary that has either been trampled on or the thing that I care about that has been offended? Okay. That's a good, uh, that's a good question because we have a lot of people um, that are struggling with expressing themselves, especially after they have been offended. And so mm -hmm. it's true. Um, I, I, I think when you began the question earlier, you referred to men. At times, men are the ones that actually um, are victims of this. Not really victims, anyway. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that uh, are, are love to not. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> they are the ones that would would not find themselves expressing, but women as well don't get to uh, express, especially those that are in situations like uh, codependency, and they 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 do not want to offend the partner, you know, just mm -hmm. so that they keep the peace, you know, in the relationship and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. How can how can one manage this, or how can one just get to work on this? Especially the suppression. The suppression is something that has been there for the longest time, especially in Africa, um, well in Asia as well. But it's 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 important that we get to firstly work on that limiting belief that we have carried. I think it's a core belief that we do not have to express ourselves and that's where it begins from most people would say it's an issue with being assertive because we have a lot of people that are not quite assertive and some have all these other different excuses but i think it begins from the the belief you as a person valuing your voice but at the same time as you are valuing your voice you have to value your approach uh, or rather you have to be mindful of your approach because it is one thing to bring up a matter. It is another to handle the matter. So you're bringing it up, but are you yeah. bringing it up to handle it? Or are you simply bringing it up to just air things out? So it's it's important that we understand that well, what we need to have here is not necessarily an argument, but a conversation. And how a conversation mm -hmm. would hold would determine how you raise or bring up this very matter. So in, 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 in how you bring up the matter, that's really uh, uh, what determines the flow or just how receptive the person that you are about to talk to, you know, will be able to uh, uh, be. So I usually say that to be, um, I usually say offense yeah. is an event. Offended yeah. is a decision, right? Mm -hmm. So we will be off. We will meet offense, you know, mm -hmm. during the day, during the week. People will, in their own way, maybe intentionally or unintentionally, directly, indirectly, people will somehow, you know, be able to bring that offense to us. And we get in to be offended is when we now say, ah, that has touched me. <laughs> you know, so we decide that. And it is important when we decide that, when we realize that, okay, I've been offended, we yeah. should know how to talk about that issue. Because I'm, 
I'm saying how to talk about it because if we if we are not going to suppress, then we have to express ourselves. So mm. if we express ourselves the right way, if we bring it up the right way, at times you could even be the one that has been offended. But how you bring it out matters, you know? How you bring it out matters. I'm not saying we should we should be mindful and be as though we are walking, whether stepping on eggshells or anything like that. But it matters for you or rather to you. It also matters to the other person as well, how you bring it out. So the expression in itself is what I would say we should be very mindful of. But I'm not saying we shouldn't, you know, talk about it. We should talk about it. But how we bring up the matter is what is very much important. We need to, to, to be quite wise, but at the same time, we need to ensure that the person knows that you have been offended. Because oftentimes people don't know that you've been offended. And it's there is no shame in saying, I've been offended. There's no shame in saying that. Because oftentimes we want to act as, oh, we're cool, you know. Uh, but then it's, it's important that we bring it out to say, all right, I think you've overstepped our boundaries and mm. what you said is not something that I would really want to tolerate I think it has offended me so it's important that people get mm. to know that yeah mm -hmm. yeah you remind me of one of my favorite quotes of all time which I read from Love and Respect uh, mm -hmm. by Dr. Emerson which I think that's yeah. his name like yeah. love and respect the book on marriage and it talks there's one quote that i always carry and it doesn't only apply in marriage it's in everyday relationship you can be Absolutely. right but wrong mm. at the top of your voice and he was just teaching yes. the lesson which you have just talked about right now where mm -hmm. look your anger is is valid but yeah. how you approach it you put the other person mm -hmm. on, on defense and, and whatnot so you're going yeah. to have a conversation to address the mm. problem, not just yeah. to, to scream. Um, yeah, the and make them feel bad and guilty. <laughs> make them feel bad, yeah. So which is why yeah. I think it was very important for me to ask that question in that we, we should always remember that it's, it's, it's not okay to suppress, but also mm. we should have the confidence to, to address yeah. the issue. That 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 Absolutely. offends us because that's how we move forward. Yeah. Mm. What does that? There is a book that I think I don't know if it's just something that was said in the book, but it says sin begets sin, right? Oh yeah. So yes. whatever yes. it gives, yes. the thing gives birth after itself. When you when you that's suppress, true. you only give birth to more anger. So more it's anger. just that's... so important mm -hmm. to yeah to just to just sit in it i guess and then when when you're mm -hmm. done sitting in it address it so that you can move forward. because like you had explained doc, yeah. doctor it's it's anger is a transformative transformative um emotion looks like yeah. tonight what we had most time for was <laughs> was anger <laughs> we didn't even dive into the other emotions <laughs> Perhaps we could adjourn for, for next week uh, and continue with the with the other emotions, but I think we, we unpacked a lot uh, on anger tonight. Is, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Doc, can you hear me? Hello, can you I'm get sure me? Lost yeah, 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 I can get you. I think my network as well is you not very stable me. here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I can get on you. just anger itself, yeah. Any last words on 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 anger? Okay, so I think it's 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 important for us to understand that our feeling of anger is valid. Yes. However, mm -hmm. it is how we express it that really matters, mm -hmm. because, like we have mm -hmm. said, it is a transformative emotion. A transformative uh, 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 feeling and when we get to feel it we need to know or rather we need to be mindful that whatever action we do in response or reaction is going to be a part of our life it's going to be a part of our narrative it's going to be a part of our memories it's going to be a part of what we would look at now is it something that we would be glad to refer to or it is something that we'll be ashamed to refer to so anger in itself is something that helps us 
I think most of the times that I am angry at something or someone, though I think anger in itself, I should mention, is not purposed for other people in as much as we make it, mm. uh, in, 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 in as much as we project it on other people. It is not really purpose for other people. It is purpose for us to know that this is what is happening, you know. So if we, if, if, if we understand it from that perspective, we'll be able to actually know how best to navigate through. There was a time, I think, I know where I concluded. <laughs> there was a time somebody asked me, Doc, you're a peaceful person. And I've never seen you angry. <laughs> Yeah. How do you manage times of what anger? Because I know, yeah, the person was like, because I know you all, you you do get angry, but how do you not yeah. bring it out? And I was, <laughs> I was like, well, you are right, I I do get angry, <laughs> but the thing is, I don't yeah. hold on to it. I don't really hold on to it. So I yeah. I allow myself to to know. Or rather, I allow myself to feel it, and mm. I I think I've reached a point where I understand just the repercussions of anger in itself if I was to act on it, and so I would yeah. allow myself to feel it. But if I have the opportunity of uh, making somebody know that they have uh, angered me in a particular way. I would literally have a conversation with them. But in the past, what I would do is that I would understand what that anger entails and I would literally give the person a distance, you know, because yeah. I wouldn't want <laughs> to act or say something that I don't mean in that moment when I am, you know, uh, and not fine. Because it is true that when you are when you when you are angered, you are not okay in the moment. So yeah, yeah. So that's really what uh, I would love us to conclude with uh, on anger. Mm -hmm. It helps us to know ourselves better, but we should know that it mm -hmm. is not purposed for the the other person. Mm -hmm. It just mm -hmm. signals and gives us the message that this is what has happened somebody has violated whatever it is uh, somebody I, or at times it's not even a person it's just situations that would anger us yeah. 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 yeah thanks a lot doc truly appreciate your time i look forward to our next sit down next week and hopefully we can dive deeper into the into the other emotions the other emotions uh, yeah. Well. yeah yeah so thanks yes, yes, a lot yes. for tonight you have a good night Thank you so much. Week. Please do get better. Do get better. I know I know well. Okay. Just to get better. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. Bye then. All right. All right. Bye bye.